Well, thank you very much for being here today. Uh, my name is Antonio. I come from Barcelona, where I live, where I work. Uh, we have a different uh, weather. <laughs> and well, I work uh, developing plugins for WordPress in my own company, Nalio Software. We are a very, very small company, only three people. And well, let's start with the topic. Do you know that guy? Yeah, Matt Mullenbeck in the state of the world, 2015, Welcome US, said the following, that we should learn JavaScript deeply. So my question for you guys is, did you learn JavaScript deeply? <laughs> because I don't. I didn't. I didn't learn JavaScript deeply. Uh, and the reason is uh, because being a small company, you have very limited resources, very limited time. And I had no time to learn JavaScript deeply. Also, it wasn't a priority to learn JavaScript deeply for my business because my plugins were working. So back in 2015, I have no idea Gutenberg was in the cook. In, in the kitchen, I think. So the problem becomes a became a pri priority when, in last December, Gutenberg finally was announced with a release date. It was at that moment when I think I thought that, uh, well, we had a problem. We need to make our plugins comp compatible with um, Gutenberg and the new editor in order to continue with our business. So I started learning JavaScript uh, deeply at that moment. And I discovered that learning JavaScript is not only learning JavaScript. It's learning JavaScript, Gutenberg, and all this stuff that you can see here, because everybody is using it, including Gutenberg. So well, here you have um, two options. First one is uh, complain. And sorry. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> now I'm complaining. Whoops. Okay. Uh, the first one is complain. You know, you can uh, yell at the sky and say, why me? Why me? But this won't do anything. You'll have the problem already. So, being an open source community like WordPress, we have the, the benefit of uh, looking at the source code of other plugins. Other plugins from other companies that have more resources than I have. So that's what I did. So in order to start, you need a modern build process, but I didn't know how to create one. So I explored the, the most common plugins that had the resources to adapt to Gutenberg uh, before that I could. So with that um, plugins, I investigated how they, how they did all the things, and they were using compilers, transpilers, linters, bundlers, and all that, that stuff that we uh, saw that, uh, so here. So I extracted that information, understand what they did, and create a uh, WordPress block editor boilerplate that is uh, available, uh, available for free for you to use. So you have to uh, not worry about all this stuff because you can download it and start uh, creating your projects on top of that without all the problems that configurations uh, introduce. So now I was able to write JavaScript on top of something. The problem is that I was reading Gutenberg, the, the JavaScript code in, inside, and I couldn't understand anything about that. Because, because the syntax was really different. Of course, I'm a developer, I know how to program, but all this stuff, object structuring, latent cons, and all that, all that, all that um, construction that you see uh, right there are new for me. So. In order to start uh, writing JavaScript, instead of learning JavaScript deeply, what I needed 
at first was to understand the syntax behind that. So it took me a couple of hours, not more, and I was ready after uh, doing some tutorials to, to be ready to, to learn and understand the, the Gutenberg code. So my recommendation is that you start by understanding the JavaScript uh, modern uh, syntax. Then maybe you think, well, I need to also learn reactively. Wrong. You don't need to understand anything about React when working on top of Gutenberg. What you really need is to understand the JSX syntax, which is kind of uh, HTML with superpowers that allows you to create uh, user interfaces on top of Gutenberg. Here's a, an easy example that uses a heading uh, tag. But also, there are other um, components inside Gutenberg that you can reuse. So don't reinvent the wheel. Don't start from scratch. There are a lot of components, like here, color picker, that it's already in Gutenberg for you to use. Another thing that was really, really surprising to me was that everybody was talking about, in tutorials on internet, about register block type, which is the main function behind Gutenberg that allows you to create new blocks. Every single tutorial out there is explaining how this function works and how you can create new blocks inside Gutenberg. But nobody told me that there are lots of functions for you to use as a developer. So I'm not going to, to explain anything about register block type today because it's easy to find on the internet. I'm going to explain a couple of methods that are very interesting and very powerful and less popular. The first one is register plugin. That's a method that allows you to include uh, an extension in the editor that appears in the sidebar of, of, the, of the editor itself. So it's really easy to use. You, use, you only need to, to call the register plugin function, uh, include a name, uh, in, and a configuration including the icon that you want to show, in this case, heard, which is the, the heard dash icon, and which is the component that you want to, to render. And the component is also very easy to understand. This component is just a function that returns some JSX, which is a fragment, another reusable component that wraps everything. And inside, you have a plugin sidebar, more menu item, which is a, a, an, an item in, in the menu, and the sidebar itself. That includes, in this case, a color picker. Only by doing that, you can have all that you can see there. My plugin with the hertz icon and the sidebar with the color picker. That easy. So finally, writing um, components in, in, in Gutenberg is nothing uh, more difficult than that. Another very, very powerful method that maybe nobody of you uh, uh, know is the subscribe method inside the data package. That method allows you to put inside a, a listener function that will listen all the changes in the editor. So anytime a uh, changes occurs in the editor, your function will execute. Let's see an example. Imagine that I want to uh, call the function on title change from main functions anytime that uh, the title of the post um, changes. So I call the subscribe and inside I put a, a, a function where these two lines uh, get me the title of the post and then I call the untitled change. But please, if you want to use uh, the subscribe method, Take into account that this will in introduce a performance issue because any time a change uh, occurs in the, in the editor, your function will be executed, not every time that the title changes. So any time that you use the subscribe method, please uh, use a condition. Like that, I just added an if that checks whether the title has changed or not. And if it didn't, just return. But this has some, 
some particularities. For example, let's say that you write the code uh, on top, which is uh, another call to the subscribe method, and you include your function that uh, does something. And then I write the, the function in the bottom that only calls a console lock. If you do that, you subscribe it first. So every time a change occurs in the editor, your function will execute. But your function has an error that will throw an, exec an, uh, an exception that will stop the execution. So my code will never run. My suggestion here is that you need to be aware that you are not alone, that even though you won't um, produce a white script of death, like in PHP, you should write the, J the JavaScript code respectfully, or otherwise you may write, uh, you mark, you may write uh, things. So finally, we come back to the uh, beginning about learning JavaScript deeply. That, that was our assignment, according to Matt. But in my opinion, what you should do is learn Gutenberg shallowly, not deeply, and then start developing quickly, because that way you'll be able to react uh, faster and to have a big picture of the project and then go deep with what you really are interested on doing. So that's pretty much what I have today. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio.